Okay, too long didn't watch. Two most important tips for you to uh, not be useless as ADC in Season 12 is you need to not die to the enemy jungle in lane. Okay, you need to look at your map, look at your jungle, assume the jungle's bot. Okay, and then the second thing is when it comes to team fights, you need to pay attention to the people who are, have lethal on you. The ones with CC and or damage. Okay, I've done too many YouTube takes. So I'm just, just, we're just going to go. Okay, so... um. It has been a long time since I made an educational video for you guys. And, you know, going by the title, you should have an idea uh, uh, what this video is about. Okay, I'm going to, I'm here to teach you how to not be useless on ADC in season 12. Okay, and it clicked. Okay, the other day I went on a 13 and 1 win streak um, to go from 0 OP to 250 OP. And it may not seem like much, we're like still piss low, right? But I'm pretty sure I can keep this going and like, climb super high with this okay so i'm gonna teach you um pretty much what i used to go on this 1301 um win streak okay and by the end of this video you should be able to know how to basically not be completely useless as an adc okay and um you know as like an overview i guess the three main areas we're gonna look at are how to not lose the game in 15 minutes 15 minutes in the landing phase how to not randomly die in the mid game, um, and how to not randomly throw team fights. Okay, and I'm gonna show uh, you guys what each of these look like, and of course how we solve these issues. Okay, so the first one is um, a lot of you guys feel like you the game is lost within 15 minutes, and you're right, it is in fact lost within 15 minutes a lot of times. And even if it is not lost within 15 minutes, a lot of times you have no control over the whole game because of what happened in the early game. And um, the issue that you guys are having is that you're you're trolling, you're trolling, you're trolling the landing phase, okay? So the first thing we're gonna examine is the landing phase. And the important part to look at is um, season 12 is, it is really, really, really important. It was always important in other seasons, but season 12 especially, to not die to the jungler. If you die to the jungler, you do not deserve to win the game. You already FF, unironically, okay? And the reason being is that um, when the enemy jungler gets fed, they're going to, of course, run around and shit on other lanes, right? Like like, like other seasons. But unlike other seasons, they will one-shot other lanes and you in the mid-game. Like that, okay. I mean, it didn't really happen as often last uh, last few seasons. But this season especially, you see, like, I don't know, Karthus or Hecarim or whatever there. Or, you know, if they get, or Eve, you know, if they get, like, a few kills in the early game because of bot lane, game's over. There's just, it's just like, it's maybe it's not 100% lost, but as an ADC, you don't get to play. Congratulations. You fucked yourself, okay? So, um, what we need to do is to never die to the jungler because if you die to the jungler, you can say the whole game is your fault okay and um if you don't believe me i have examples of course you know you know you know me i always come prepared with examples in my videos okay so the first thing we're going to see is when the enemy jungler gets fed and in this game i was not the one who fed the jungler but it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter when somebody feeds the enemy jungler the game is kind of doomed okay and this will happen but i'm showing you this for you guys to know for show you guys how important it is for you to not feed the enemy jungler yourself Okay, so um, in this clip, it's me and Lux pushing this bot, right? And this Diana, <clears throat> this Diana is is five and zero. Oh. Not even, not from me, but from other lanes. Okay, and like, look at this. She's flagging over, instantly kills the Lux through exhaust, and then just like, uh, use all her spells, but it doesn't matter because she uses all her spells again and kills me somehow. I don't fucking know, right? Who fucking knows? I don't even know how I died here, but I'm dead. Okay, she is so ungodly fed like five kills is ungodly fed she's level nine it is so unplayable she literally won't be to us without breaking a sweat okay this is the problem with feeding the jungler you cannot i repeat you cannot die to the jungler as bot lane or otherwise you should ff otherwise you do not deserve to win that game if you die this is i cannot stress this enough the, the laning phase is of paramount importance to adc this season the laning phase not being a disaster you can die to the enemy bot lane i don't give a fuck right you can die to the jinx and the field it doesn't matter you die to the jungler it's a disaster okay you die to the mid laner kind of bad as well but not as bad as dying to the jungler okay so let me show you um 
Let me show you some um, other examples. So obviously you know what it looks like when the enemy jungler is fed. They're just one-shotting you and your whole team. But what does it look like when your jungler gets fed, okay? So let me show you an example of us getting nid fed, okay? So bot lane pretty much exists to create jungle gap, okay? Well, pretty much all lanes exist to create jungle gap in the early game, okay? Um, so what you'll see here is that we are fighting a lot, <clears throat> right? And then... Nid is uh was planning to invade, but then she's like, oh psych, they're uh they're fighting bots. So our job is to fight as much as possible because our jungle's on our side of the map. And then she can come here and just collect her uh 600 gold uh jungle camp, which is the bot lane, okay? And so she collects her 600 gold, right? Uh is it more? No, it's not more because Aatrox got first blood. 600 gold could have been like, you know, a lot more, but <clears throat> it's fine. It's already insane amount. And the game is won. The early mid game is won from here. And you're like, wait, what? Like, it's just, I mean, it's only two minutes, three minutes in the game. Yeah, it's only three minutes in the game. Jungle's won. It's lit, right? Um, and let me show you, of course, you know, the, the fallout of this is that, you know, Nidalee is going to go run around and just shit on the whole enemy team. Like, okay, if you if you look at the minimap here, Nidalee is literally chasing. She literally went mid, shit on the mid laner, and then is chasing Volobear deep into his jungle and killing him there. Like, well, like what is this, guys? Like, this is what, this is like, what happens when the jungler is fed. They do shit like this. It's really insane. And then, uh, of, of course, eventually, we will um, get to the point where Nid revisits bot. I mean, she can go to any lane, honestly. Um, probably not the lane that's, like, giga losing, like, top lane, but she's just going to literally kill people in one hit. Like, it's 11 minutes in the game, and she's she's going to start killing people off spear. Like, yes, of course, my ulti helped, but as you can see, she hit the spear on the Jinx, dove tower flashed out like how many times has this happened to you guys the enemy jungler literally just randomly kills you and then pieces right that's this This is exactly the problem okay this is so i, I mean you guys i'm sure you guys are getting the point here but let me show you let me show you one last example here okay just like look at look at the bottom look at the bottom left of the screen here in this team fight you know see that look at this nid damage boom <laughs> the enemy adc has just she nid snapped her fingers and the enemy adc disappeared okay so hopefully you get the point. But basically, um, <clears throat> you really need to play bot lane so that your jungle gets strong or at the very least, the enemy jungler does not get fed off you. At a minimum, the enemy jungler cannot get fed off coming bot at a bare minimum, okay? And, you know, logically speaking, um, feeding your jungler gives you more time to, to scale Right, because the mid game is secured. Your jungle, or unless your jungle jungle is trolling, um, the mid game is you know the mid game. You guys will not lose the game in the mid game. You guys will have plenty of time to play the game, um, and then you'll be able to farm your items, right? Farm, play well, get your item spikes, and the game will not be over by fifteen minutes when you do your job bot lane, most of the time. Okay, and then on the uh, flip side, feeding the enemy jungler gives you less time to scale because the enemy jungler will be so strong. They'll be able to, you know, kill off all the other lanes, one-shot you in fights, and then, you know, they take up your objective and the game, you know, collapses and you guys lose, right? Like you saw in that Dian example, I'm trying to farm bot with my Lux, like trying to push one wave, and Diana Flash killed us, killed us both. So we have less time to scale, okay? So <clears throat> we need to help. We need to make sure we play laning phase correctly to make sure um, we're not throwing the game in the first 15 minutes, okay? And... Um, <clears throat> You can, we, you know, the rest of this is basically um, Nid uh, can no longer 1v9 because we're getting towards the later stages of the, game, of the game. But the game has gone on for a long enough for me to get my items and my levels so that I can carry these fights, <clears throat> okay? And that's kind of the big idea. Us getting Nidalee fed in the early game, let her buy us time to get strong in the late game where we can actually do something relevant in fights. Okay, that's the big idea. Okay, now obviously we know you shouldn't die to the jungler, but how do we actually do this? The strat is um, we, we want to act like the game is turn-based. I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys have heard about this idea before, but the game, you want to view the game in, 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 in turns, okay? 30 second turns and 30 seconds uh, the reason why we use 30 seconds is because for it's for every new minion wave that comes out okay so for on every new minion wave we are going to look at the map see what our jungler is doing and then assume their jungler is bot if you cannot see uh, if you cannot see them right 
And then uh, on top of that, you know, you can look at millionaires if someone's pushed in. And then you want to calculate how many people are bought. Like, do we have more people or do they have more people? And you go from there. Okay, just like take a look at a really easy example. Okay, so in this case, we are going to look at the map and we see that our jungler Rexa is top. He's about to gank top, dive top, right? And their jungle is assumed to bot, but we actually see Nidalee bot, right? So therefore, we do not want to die to gank. They will want to fight. And how would they fight? This is where we calculate, okay? How would they fight? It's Leona, uh, Leona E, and then Q into Jin W. Leona stun into Jin W, right? Is how they will fight. So, how will you counterplay? How will you beat this, right? Uh, and then you can see my um, solution here. Um, for us, we can, you know, flash it if you want to. Uh, but for us, we're going to trap ourselves under tower, right? And, and that was the solution I come up with, right? And this is the, you can, there's, plenty, there's probably plenty of solutions. You can flash, you can exhaust it. I, it doesn't really matter, right? The, the, the point is, is that you have, you know who's coming bot. And then you calculate how are they going to kill you? And then you find a solution. Right, the solution itself, you know, it doesn't matter, but you, you know, there are most, there can be multiple solutions to a problem. So, the issue that most of you guys watching this video have, if not all of you guys, is that you don't even know the enemy jungler is here. Like when I watch some of you guys' replays, the enemy jungler is literally showing on a ward, and you're like fighting or something, and then you just like die. Right? Okay, that's that's usually what you guys have a problem with. Okay, so the strategy is: remember, we are going to look at the map, our jungle, then their jungle, then you calculate the the pvp cc okay then you calculate cc how are they going to do it okay <clears throat> so in this case we're going to look at uh, our jungle our jungle diana is ganking bot right we're going to look for their jungle the jungle is automatically assumed bot is olaf right until proven otherwise and then both mids are mid no one's pushed in so neither mid are coming and because of the uh, tp changes from like whatever um from whenever ago preseason uh top laners cannot come bot uh, unless they tp to the tower okay so <clears throat> in this case our Dan is coming, but that doesn't mean we're just straight ganking. It means we should assume we're going to get a Dan gank and Olaf's going to counter. And then, of course, we see Olaf on the on the ward, right? So uh, when it comes to executing these ganks, we pick the target that our jungle and support pick. So in this case, it was Samir who, like, jumped in, right? And then afterwards, um, you know, high priority targets, usually the jungler, right? But in our case, we just instantly killed the Samir who tried to go in because she thought she had a jungle gank. This is a lot of the times um, you guys will you have this problem, too. She thought her jungle was coming, right? But in fact, and, and she was just, oh, it's just 3v2. Let me just fight, right? But in fact, our Dino was already here. So it's 3v3. It's very important that when your jungle is bot, you assume their jungle is bot as well until proven otherwise. Because if you don't assume the jungle is bot, then you guys are going to lose the early game at four minutes. Like you saw here, they just lost the early game at four minutes, right? Their jungle died. My jungle got a kill. It's lit, right? Okay, let's look at another example. Um, in this case, we see that uh, our jungle, Graves, is coming bot. Right? Um, their top laner, Vayne, is dead. Not really relevant. Their mid laner is getting pushed in, and the jungle is nowhere to be found. Right? So, wouldn't you assume that uh, their jungle is here? It's the exact same thing, exact same example as the last game, except mid laners are moving here. Right? So, when our graves ganks, we expect a counter gank from their jungler. But then, when their jungler comes, our mid laner is also coming. So, it's 4v3. So, that's how we know this gank will always work. So, that means I can bait. Because I know we will have more people. So if you watch this, I'm just going to tank Leona stun, right? It's lit. She's trolling. And then I, all I have to do is just live. I don't have to do anything else except stay alive, right? I can play for assist. I can, like, go for zap and whatever. But literally, all I have to do is just AFK and play to live, right? And then there's literally nothing they can do, okay? This is the important part about the laning phase you guys need to do um, in order to have, a, in order to not feel useless. Because if this, if, if you are this, if you are the enemy Kai'Sa in this game, your laning, your your early game is done. It's doomed. You can't do anything. It feels like you can't do anything because you can't do anything. The thing that you could have done was already done, which is this part, the ganking part, right? And in order to have control over this part of the game, you cannot control what your jungler is doing. You cannot control what your support is doing. The thing you can control is knowing if something good or bad is going to happen before it happens through map awareness. And using this, we can play correctly and or ping our teammates off. Right? So in our case, if we're getting hit by the Leona EQ and our mid laner wasn't coming and their jungle was just counter ganking, we were all fucking dead. Right? Because, you know, we are we have a gank, but then we get counter ganked and then Jinx is already at 1 HP. Right? But because our mid laner is coming, it's guaranteed 1, even though I'm 1 HP. Just this simple, knowing this simple difference of that our mid laner is coming, 
right? And their millionaire can't come. Is the difference between us tanking Leona Combo is good versus us tanking Leona, Leona Combo is bad, okay? Let's take a look at more uh, case studies here. Oh yeah, we're clearing this wave. Um, our Udyr is playing on our side of the map. Amumu has no flash and they have an Ivern jungle, okay? So the gank is going to be like Blitzcrank hook with Ivern Q, something like that, right? And we see that Ivern, uh, we see that Udyr is, you know, playing mid, not really bot. So what does that mean? Oh, we assume, assume Ivern is bot. On this wave, Udyr is not here, but Ivern is here in one of these bushes. So what does that mean? Oh, I'm standing in Africa because whoever gets hit is dying. And you can see here that, of course, Amumu gets hit because he has no flash, so he's just fucking dead, right? And so um, uh, Udyr, when he sees this, is going to use this time to gank mid, right? That's kind of how the turn the turns work, is that when one jungler does something, the other jungler will react, right? And so um, here I'm going to teach you, uh, if you do choose to play the 4v5, which is uh, what's happening here, um, if you play, if you decide to play the the dive, oh, okay, if it's just like a normal fight, you got to one-shot someone, right? Um, but in this case, it's a dive, so we need to focus the guy who's going to tank tower. It's going to be the support, usually, right? Or the tankiest guy, usually. So Blitzcrank. Can you kill Blitzcrank if they dive? If the answer is yes, you can play the 4v5. So in our case, we're going to literally throw all our abilities on the guy who's going to tank the tower, which is Blitzcrank here. So we're literally going to do as much damage to him as possible, right? <clears throat> And then uh, try and uh, I'll play the dive. And it, uh, of course, you know, since I prepared this, you already know that it's going to work, right? So we get two kills for the dive. And while Ivern is ganking bot, is diving bot, Udyr is diving top. You see how this works, right? When one jungler does something, the un other jungler will react. So by nature, you doing good things bot lane. By not dying to the enemy jungler or not making it worth his time, you are automatically giving your jungler an opportunity to make jungle difference. To, to, to do something good, right? And if Udyr, like, instant dive top, well, that's too bad. But, you know, you at least you gave him the opportunity to do so, okay? You gave him, you gave him the chance to make jungle diff. And that's the kind of important lesson here today is that when you deny enemy bot gameplay, right? You deny the enemy jungler gameplay bot lane, you enable your jungler to do something on the other side of the map or to counter gank, okay? And then let's see, like, another, like, basic example, okay? So in this case, um... We see that the uh, Ivern and Blitz are top, right? We're going to see like a, a more offensive example, right? So that means their ADC is alone, but if their jungle and support show top and they assume their top laner is going top and their mid laner is, has not pushed our mid laner in, so their mid laner is mid, then it's just the ADC bot, right? Which means, what does that mean? 2v1, we should look to dive her. Not saying that you can, like sometimes you have a sonar or something, you cannot dive, but of course in our case, we can in fact dive, right? So... <clears throat> We just dive her is super simple, okay? Basically, all these this, all this decision making is map based, okay? You need to be able to look at the map and see what enemy jungler is doing, and sometimes see its support is roaming. And what does that mean for you bot lane? Let's look at a, a game where the enemy jungler is playing on our side of the map, and our jungler is playing on the opposite side of the map, so we can't really do anything. What does that look like? Okay, if we look at the map here, our jungle is on the Rift Herald, and their jungle is we have nowhere. No, we have no idea. Actually, in fact, we know that it's probably not topside because we can see that um, we have a, a deep pink ward up there. And she has no camps up besides the um, the Krugs. So we know that she's probably bot side, right? So when Echo does a Rift Herald, it sends a message to the jungler, oh, I should do something bot side, right? So how should we play? We should play really, really, really scared. And you can see that uh, the Dinah is, in, in fact, invading. Right? See that Diana is literally doing our chickens, can, is about to do our Krugs. It could be ganking mid. We don't know, right? So we play super safe bot. And you see that we are literally ignoring the minions. Uh, you cannot get the minions. You can't just walk up and farm minions, guys, right? And then you see that Akali is leaving to go top. So their mid laner will either counter or come bot. Probably come bot. So we are getting four man, right? Uh, well, Talon went back mid. But you can see that we can't farm. That's fine. This is your, this is your job. And... You might, you might be thinking, okay, but like, aren't you like doing nothing here? Well, here's the thing. You might not be doing anything here, but your team is killing their top laner, summoning Rift Herald, and taking the first tower. Okay? So at the cost of you losing a wave or two, we're getting all of top. And the other, the other decision to make is to die bot lane so that, you know, you get all of top, but instead of, you know, losing two waves, you lose two waves and you give up two kills. Right? So... <clears throat> This is what it looks like when you are playing weak side and you cannot farm. It's fine. Okay. Sometimes you get denied. That's fine. Okay. 
if we look at uh, this part of the game at 12 minutes, you can see that Echo is playing on our side of the map. And of course, when Echo is here and we don't know where the jungle is, we assume they're bot, right? So we know this is a 3v3. So unfortunately, uh, Echo is like getting binded or whatever. So we are, we lose the 3v3. We're actually, you know, it's kind of a disaster. Not really our fault, but it's fine. So what does that mean for us? Okay, uh, we just have to AFK and not die, right? Same thing, right? If you cannot get the minions, basically, if you have to ask, can I get the minions? You cannot get the minions, right? And they're literally going to dive you with Morgana bind. You know, if she, she's going to flash bind, do you have any way to stop this? No. <laughs> okay, then can't get the minions, right? And then when we see them leave to go dragon, then you can get the minions, okay? But until then, you can't walk up, okay? It's very important. Oh, here's another example. Here's another example. Okay, Soraka. Soraka. <laughs> okay, check this out. This is something you definitely shouldn't do, okay? Our jungler, our jungler is doing the Rift Herald again. And, our, and you know, their jungler is probably bot, right? Uh, and our Soraka decides to uh, run into their <laughs> run into their jungle for some reason. So of course she's literally just gonna die to the enemy jungler, right? Um, and I mean, not to mention that our mid's not even there, right? So okay, our Soraka is trolling. Our support's trolling. Can you do anything bot? What do you think, guys? No, because you have no support. So they're literally going to dive you. And you can see here we're getting zoned from the tower again. It's fine, guys. Seriously, like the alternative is to go die. Okay. So don't go die. And this is literally, this screenshot is what it looks like. We're down two levels, down 12 CS, no kill, no assist, no death. This is what playing weak side correctly means. Do not grief the game away by dying to their jungle, okay? And then if we fast forward, if we fast forward um, to like here, right, the 21 minute mark, we are literally, if we look at the scoreboard, right? If you look at the scoreboard, right? We are literally no kill one assist okay like 200 cs at 22 minutes and enemy adc has in fact just inted okay so it's basically you know you need and you, if you do your job you will get your chance to play the game unless the enemy jungler is just getting fed for free on other lanes somehow okay um but this is basically what it should look like when you're just playing weak side the whole game you don't get to farm some waves that's fine sometimes you can't defend dive that's fine right you just have to suck it up. But no matter what, don't die. Because a lot of times you guys just walk to the tower and then you get dove for a man or get dove by the jungler. Cannot do that, okay? Okay, other easy tips I can tell you guys is, um, uh, of course, you know, base on cannon wave, right? If you need to find a base timer, right? Or if you're trying to base when the enemy jungler is coming bot, we want to base on the cannon wave because it takes them, the enemy bot lane, the most amount of time to push into your tower and it takes the most amount of tower shots, right? So you will lose the least amount of minions when you come back to lane, okay? And, uh, you know, you, you want to do this uh, whenever you want to base, right? You don't, you don't really want to base when your jungler is coming bot, but um, you want to base when your jungler is playing topside, for example, and you just pushed and it's going to be a cannon wave, or they just pushed in and the next one's a cannon wave, right? So you can base, you can, you can, you can get a base in because they will probably base, or if they don't base, you'll come back in time to catch the wave. Another quick tip for a lot of you guys is that... Uh, when you guys see your jungler playing on your side of the map, you guys kind of have this tendency to freeze or pull the wave. You guys don't want to push it because you want your jungler to gank. And then by you know having your jungler gank, you're like, oh, this is how we win the game. Our jungler gets fed, right? But the part that you're forgetting is that their jungler could be bot. Right? A lot of times you guys are just pulling the wave and assuming their jungle just doesn't exist. And then your jungle ganks, you know, the idea doesn't work because they flash away, walk away, or their enemy counter jungles, uh, counter ganks, right? And you guys just lose, right? So usually when your jungler is playing on your side of the map, you want to push, right? Uh, in this example, you can see that Zeri and Sona are pushing, even though Sona has no flash, right? Against Kaelin Thresh. And it's going to be painfully obvious that we can kill Sona with Thresh Flay into Hook, right? But here's the thing, because Echo is playing on their side of the map, because Echo is playing bot, he can protect them from us forcing and or ganking. Right? Imagine if it was Fiddle coming around, Echo could one-shot Fiddle with his team. Right? So, in general, when you want, when your jungle is playing on your side of the map, you want to push to allow him to do stuff. He doesn't necessarily need to gank in order to get stuff done. Right? He can invade, for example, or look for a dive, right? Or control the side of the map, or maybe do dragon, right? Do objective, right? But uh, the worst is when uh, you don't push, and then he can't do anything. And then he just has the base and the enemy team just like does dragon or something. Okay. So when in doubt, push when your jungle is playing on your side of the map. Okay. Now that we figured out how to not 
lose the game through the landing phase, then we will move on to how to not lose the game in the mid game, okay, outside the landing phase, okay? So uh, let's take a look at the mid game macro, okay? This part should be relatively fast. It's pretty simple, okay? Um, as a default in the mid game, you want to, uh, just like in the landing phase, you need to stare at the map pretty much the whole time. You need to hump the map with your eyes, okay? Um, and uh, if you don't, stuff like this will happen. I'm sure you guys have seen this before, right? Check this out. <clears throat> I'm just mid, you know, minding my own business when uh, surprise get instantly killed by Rengar, okay? And you guys are like, oh my god, he just does like infinite damage and he like ignites or whatever, like, okay. Any champion in the game is going to do that to you in the mid game. Let's be honest here, okay? So the way to prevent this is just like in landing phase, you need to take a look at the waves in the mid game as 30 second turns. And on every turn, you need to figure out who is in your lane and what does that mean for you, okay? What, you know, you look at jungle and solos and you say, you know, you look at your jungle and you say, okay, what can we do here after you have this information, okay? So let's take a look at some examples here. Okay, let's look at this Jinx example. Um, you can see that their jungle, Lee, is top and my jungle is in base and my support is bot. So what are we doing here? We need to make sure we don't get dove by Cassio plus uh, enemy support, right? Um, it's pretty simple. Cassio didn't even walk up, so it's obviously not happening, right? And uh, here, okay, on this next wave, it's the same thing. It's Cassio, our flash, is probably best engaged here, right? Are we really worried about that? No, we're good, okay? So we can just push the wave, right? And then since we're still staring at the map, we see Cassio is chasing our Lulu, right? And at the same time, Lee Sin is coming mid from top. So we, our next, you know, the best engage is going to be at least an insect kick if we hit the tower or fight Cassio Janna, okay? Which means we should back off, right? And then until we see, until we keep looking at the map, until we see, get more information, right? <clears throat> our jungler is doing something top. So we wait to see what Lee Sin is doing. Oh, Lee committed top. Okay, we can push mid. And Cassio is going bot mid super free, right? It's just going to be the, uh, the support by herself. And then we see that the uh, support and uh, support went top, so we know that the Lee Sin is in the top side river. So we're just going to not hit the tower, right? In case we get engaged on by Lee Sin, that's their best engage. And then once we once we have vision on uh, Jarvan covers us, then we can start hitting the tower, right? So during this whole like slice of the mid game that I'm showing you guys here, the whole time I'm literally just staring at the map. And figuring out what to do. I'm not even looking at the minions. You guys, to, to you guys, it looks like I'm like clicking on minions and stuff. I'm not even looking at the minions. I'm literally just looking at the map. And I'm like, okay, there's Lee Sin. Okay, there's Cassio, right? <clears throat> and by pushing mid, this is why we push mid. By it being able to push mid, uh, we can start dragon and their ADC is busy catching mid, right? Or is forced to decide to catch mid or come fight the dragon, right? In this case, it's pretty fortunate that Zeri did neither. <laughs> She lost the wave and they didn't get the fight. But uh, yeah, that's why pushing mid is so important. It's because you get to go to the objective first without losing any income. Another uh, easy habit for you guys to remember is that uh, anytime someone on the enemy team dies, we should look to do, uh, we should see what's the best thing we can get objective wise. Okay. So in this example, our uh, jungler successfully ganks the uh, top lane or the top side, which is Vagar, right? And what's the best thing we can get? We can get the Herald, but he does not necessarily need us to hit it in order to get it, right? So if he doesn't need our help, we're just going to continue pushing mid. No problem. And make sure we don't die to, what is it? Galio, Galio Graves, not bad at all, right? So we can just hit, <clears throat> push the wave. Then we can go help. We can go shift top side. <clears throat> and if we fast forward a bit, we go back to pushing mid. This is the part a lot of you guys forget. After we uh, go shift or go help, we need to go back to pushing our wave, right? Go back to go back to mid and push our wave. And um, because we have pushed this wave and their jungle is receiving the wave, we know that we can just gank top of free, right? And by pushing mid is allowing us, pushing mid allows us to find opportunities to shift, to make a play in other lanes, right? <clears throat> So this is why, you know, one of the many reasons why we just need to push mid. When in doubt, figure out how to push mid, okay? Without without dying, without getting engaged on, okay? Easiest thing you can do. And then once you guys kill someone, then get the, what's the best objective you can get? Okay, this is a fun example here. Um, in this one, they have Singed and Hecarim as their top laner and jungle that you don't see here. And Jinx Lulu as their bot lane and Rise as their mid laner, okay? And so when we're pushing this top wave, we're imagining uh, what's their best engage. Oh, it's a Hecarim ulti with Singed a Ghost into Flip, 
okay? And so we're going to plan a way that doesn't allow us to die. So it's, we're assuming it's coming from the tower, right? Um, and then, so once we push this, the question is, oh, can you hit the tower against Singed and Hecarim engaged? No. So here, I'm going to channel base, right? Oh, and then we see that Hecarim shows a bot. So that means uh, their best engage can only be Singed now. Oh, shit, can we hit the tower now? Yes, because we have Jenna, right? So here, I go hit the tower, knowing that their only engage can be Singed, running at me with the flip. Right. And you can see here, you know, it's the classic, oh shit, he's like one shotting us. But because, you know, we've already calculated that Janna's here, right? And their best engage doesn't work because we have Janna, then we can, you know, push and take the fight, which is exactly what we do. Right. So you can see how in this clip we were playing to base because we didn't know where the jungle was. And then we saw the jungle, and then we could, in fact, keep pushing and fight the singe. Right. And then because Singe isn't the one not looking at the map, he's the one who dies. Uh, other mid-game random examples uh, I can teach you are, you know, don't randomly siege. You know, this is, if you guys have seen my two tips for solo queue from however many years ago, it's still applicable, guys. Don't say, don't randomly siege, okay? Uh, in this example, you're going to see the enemy team try and, like, fail, engage uh, mid. And me and Jarvan are, like, messing with Zeri. And then uh, <laughs> they decide to, like, pop Rift Herald and siege mid. But uh, as you guys know, uh, if you siege, you're just leaving yourself open to an engage, right? So they're just getting, they're just going to get destroyed here. Um, you cannot siege randomly, okay? When you siege, it means you've calculated enemy best engage and you can beat it. Like I siege that uh, top tower against Singed in that last clip and I calculated his best engage and I figured out how to beat it. You must do the same if you want to siege, if you want to hit tower, okay? Usually hitting tower is a result of winning some PvP, not because you guys just feel like hitting the tower. Uh, other, uh, another easy tip for you guys to, um, for you guys to learn here is, let's say, like, let's say, like, you want to be mid lane, you know you want to be mid lane, like, uh, like here, but, uh, you don't want to lose, uh, minions, okay? So what you can do is just push one wave, fix one wave, um, we can say push one wave, pass the river, and then just go mid. So in this Ezreal Straka clip, you can see me, I'm just going to push this wave, I'm not gonna hit the tower, I'm going to fix our lane assignments as soon as possible, because I want to be mid. <clears throat> it's the safest lane for us. So we're going to push and just run mid. No problem, okay? Just don't push and just sit bot. It doesn't make any sense. Right, you guys are just going to get solo killed by everyone under the, under the sun in, in a side lane by yourself, okay? So uh, I saw a lot of you guys uh, in the lower ranks just sit bot for some reason. No, just uh, fix one wave, go mid. No problem. Fix one wave, then go fix your lane assignments. Easy. Okay, last but not least, we're going to talk about team fighting. So the, 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 the early game and the mid game, uh, ideas existed for you guys to farm up and get to your items so that you could PvP effectively. Okay, this is not gonna work. This these team fighting ideas aren't gonna work if you're zero and ten, right? Um, <clears throat> it's not gonna do anything because you're just useless no matter what you do. Okay, um, and there are some. Uh, it's also not gonna work if you don't know what the enemy champions do, and you don't know how to play your own champion. Okay, the requirements for team fighting well uh, from this point on is that you need to be able to do damage and use your spells without thinking. You'll be able to get good value without thinking. Like, don't miss Ash ulti. Or in our in our meta, don't miss Jinx Rocket, right? Um, don't waste traps. Don't miss Zap. And uh, uh, some tips to help you guys, uh, you know, fix your mechanics on champions. Nerio champion, Porter 3 or less. And play low skill, high reward champions. Usually meta champions like Jinx, okay? Um, and you need to know what enemy champions do so you don't go die to something and be like, what was that? Okay? <clears throat> so... Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is no 4v5. It does not matter how strong you are, right? In this clip, I'm going to show you. I am more, I'm 11 CS a minute, 19 kills, okay? And we're about to take a 3v4 um, for fun, right? Uh, I mean, we kind of know it's a 3v4, but I just want to do it for fun. And you can see that, okay, as we're playing this fight out, uh, you know, it was maybe winnable if I trapped better. Yeah, basically, uh, you could say, like, I could have mechanically outplayed them if I just played a little better and put these traps down, whatever. But on the flip side, they could also just, like, play better as well and not miss their abilities, right? So at the end of the day, on average, 4v5 is an auto loss unless you instantly kill someone. And then you have to run anyways, okay? 4v5 is generally considered auto loss. Do not 4v5, no matter what. I'm just going to get that out there. I mean, you guys know you shouldn't 4v5, okay? Um, but... You know, just to make sure, in case there's anyone out there that doesn't know, you cannot 4v5. Easy season 12 habit, that uh, easy new season 12 habit, uh, I think is season 12 specific, is that you cannot be first to get hit in fights, okay? 
What do I, what does that mean? The enemy team cannot touch you first in a team fight because when they touch you, you're instantly losing all your HP, even if you don't die. Okay. So here's an example. Um, I'm full build here. Uh, it's like 40 minutes in the game. And then I'm playing against uh, Viego and Ari. And we did say, you know, no for v 5 right? But uh, in this case, I'm like, oh, I can one-shot these guys. Here's the thing. In Season 12, if you get touched by anything, you're instantly deleted, right? He just flash stunned me from stealth. I'm instantly dead, right? So the important... And then and then Viego instantly died to Kha'Zix here. Like, Kha'Zix press Q and auto-attack. <laughs> Viego is dead, right? So uh, rule of thumb uh, is usually cannot be um you cannot usually cannot break this rule is you cannot be first to get hit do not be the first to get engaged okay here's another example i'm first to take damage here because zeri is just doing zeri things okay and you can see that uh i'm like oh my god what i got hit and i'm i lost 1500 health in like one second i, I don't even know how I, unironically i'm looking at this i don't even know how i lost so much health I got hit by like an auto attack or some shit, right? And then I'm flashing and using summoners and Ari just flash ulti auto attack ignite. You see this? Watch Ari. Just ulti, flash, just auto attack ignite. I'm fucking dying, guys. Okay? And I would have died, right? It seems kind of ridiculous, but I would have died if it wasn't for a random level up. It went from level 17 to 18, okay? And that saved me. I would literally would have died to like Zeri just dash in auto attack with ulti and then Ari just ults once, ignites, and I'm dying, okay? So you actually instantly die in, um, you actually just instantly die in, in fights if you're first to take damage, okay? Or you get pushed out of the fight, which is equally as bad, okay? Do not be the first to get hit. Okay, now we've gone past the uh, obvious stuff, or hopefully obvious stuff. Let's talk about 5v5, okay? So uh, one of the requirements for 5v5 is that, uh, for effectively team fighting 5v5, is that you need to know what the enemy abilities do, and use your abilities while thinking so that in fights you can focus on enemy abilities when you're PvPing. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, for example, let's take a look at this clip. When I'm playing against Jinx, when I'm playing against Cassio, sorry, as Jinx, right, I need to not think about how I use my Zap and Ulti, but rather I need to be thinking about Cassio Ulti the whole time. Okay, so when you play these fights, you will need to be remind, remind yourself what is their CC that when it hits you, you're dead. And in this case, it's Cassio ulti, right? So the whole time, we're gonna we're gonna ulti on on you know without thinking. I'm watching Cassio ulti the whole time. Okay, when's she gonna ulti? When's she gonna ulti? She's gonna ulti right now when she gets out of vision, right? So we're gonna turn around. Okay, how can you pinpoint the exact time she'll ulti? You need to be paying attention to her the whole time. You need to not worry about what your champion is doing, but rather what the enemy champion is doing. Okay, let's look at more examples. Okay, it doesn't have to be CC, but anything that's lethal damage counts as well. Okay, so let's fast forward through this fight a little bit. <clears throat> we'll get to this part where uh okay uh, we saw all ultis used so now it's just damage okay lethal damage so we're getting to this point where cassio q is killing me right we're at one hp okay when i hit her and i'm using zap number one priority is not get hit by cassio q so as you're watching this you need to make sure you don't get hit by q no matter what i don't, I don't care if you get hit by q you're dead so as you watch this right i'm it doesn't matter i don't care what happens i just don't get hit right and of course she dies. Maybe you don't get the kill. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The, the, the part that matters is that she's dead and you're not. Right? So this is the requirement for team fighting. Because when it comes to team fighting, if you can't do this, this is what happens. Okay? Let's look at a team fight that this will... I'm, I'm sure like 80%, 90% of you people watching this video, just watch this fight and you will die at the exact same part I would die. Okay? Check it out. Just pretend to play this fight yourself and see what you're looking at. Okay, if you were looking at the Rakan and if you were looking at the Rumble, you failed, right? You failed your mission, right? If you were thinking about trap the Zanyas or hit the Rakan when he gets trapped, you failed, okay? This is the, this is the trick, right? I'm going to teach you this trick. When the fights break out, okay, your first thought shouldn't be how do you do damage because you should already know how to do that without thinking but rather are you looking at the people who can engage on you the people who will force on you it's not it's not are they going to force on you you're the adc they will always force on you right it's when what's the timing when are they going to do it and the timing is usually when the fights break out okay if you're playing safe so on the enemy team they have a zack and a rakan and a wukong so when the fight break when you people start hitting each other they are going to flash for you I promise. This whole time, I want you to watch Zack, Rakan, Wukong. Okay, they are coming, like right now, like right now. Okay, Zack, you should be thinking when the Rakan steps on a trap, 
you should be thinking, Zack and Wukong are coming for me right now. So I need to prepare Gale Force, I need to prepare Net, I need to prepare Trap. But you need to be thinking about it in the first place. Because if you're not thinking about it, you just instantly die. Which is what happens here. Here I'm just like trying to kill the Rakan. Instantly die to, you know, even Rumble OT, right? But mostly the Zack, the Wukong, um, that, that shenanigan, okay? You just instantly lose the fight and you just lose the game here in the mid-game. Usually you get one chance to turn the game around as ADC and that was your chance. It's gone. Poof. You lost. Okay? So, how do we do this? Let's practice. So, when the fights break out, I want you to not look at the guy you're trying to kill. You want to look at all the enemies. And then, you want to make sure you're keeping an eye out for the en the people, the enemy, with the engage. You want to glance at all the enemies and then you want to you want to look at all the ones that have CC and or lethal on you, like, you know, assassins, okay? So let's look at this fight. In this example, I ulted Aphelios, but I'm not looking at Aphelios, right? I'm looking at the rest of the fight. I see Galio in my face, okay? We're looking for Leona Kha'Zix, right? Oh, I see Leona Kha'Zix in the driver note, right? So when we go to trap the Galio Hourglass, I'm not thinking about trapping Galio Hourglass. I'm looking at Kha'Zix Leona. And that way, we can net in time before the Leona ult hits us. And then as we proceed in the rest of the fight, the whole time you can see that I'm looking at the Leona. I'm like, okay, she's going to EQ me. She's going to EQ me, right? And then when she shoots it to outer space, then you can just, you can do whatever you want, right? <clears throat> so that's the idea, okay? Is it's not necessarily your physical position is bad for most of you people. It's what you're thinking is not going to work in these team fights. What you're focusing on is not going to help you live in the team fights. And that's the important part about ADC in season 12. Because the instant you slip up, you're just dead. You get Thanos snapped out of existence. Let's look at this last fight, okay? Okay, in this case, we're back to our little, uh, you know, Hecarim Singed game. <clears throat> and you can see that uh, their best engage before you join the fight will be Lulu Empowered Hecarim or Lulu Empowered Singe. Okay, don't forget Hecarim Ulti, Singe Ghost. Okay. And we're gonna look, we're gonna watch these two people to see if we can go fight. Because until they do that, until they use these abilities, you can't fight, or, or you have to flash it or something, right? So I'm watching, I'm watching the, I'm watching a hacker multi the whole time here. Right? Oh, I saw hacker multi. Okay, and even though Lilia died, I doesn't even register in my head. I'm like, oh shit, they have no hacker multi. I can just do whatever I want. All right, so as you watch this, I'm setting up traps, and I can just keep hitting as long as I'm kiting. I'm good, right? Because we saw hacker multi, they have no lethal on us. And as you can see here. Right, as we're staying, we're keeping distance from Singe, we're keeping distance from Hecarim. And by doing so, the fight is unlosable, right? Instead of just letting Lilia die and just backing off, which doesn't make any sense, you, we in fact saw that Hecarim uses ulti, so as long as we don't get Singe flip, we're good to go. And then we are able to push him out, get a kill back, and then get the, 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 the Ocean Dragon, okay? So this is kind of the idea, you guys. Uh, if there's any takeaway from today, it's you need these... Well, if you have basic macro already, you need two things in order to be useful on ADC. You need to not give up a kill to the enemy jungler no matter what you do. And <clears throat> you need to make sure you're not throwing your PvP away. And the way to do this is to know uh, when, who is in your lane when you're trying to push mid so that they're, you know, you know who is engaging on you, what's their best engage. And when fights break out, it's still the same thing. What's their best engage on you um, in these fights, okay? Okay, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the end of um, my video. Sorry, it's a little bit, I got a little bit kind of um, unstructured towards the end, but hopefully, uh, those of you who watched it, um, hopefully you learned something. And uh, if you did, slash if you want to see more content, please like, comment, and subscribe to the classic YouTube. Oh, actually, I stream on Twitch. You should watch me on Twitch instead if you don't want to do, if you don't want to do those things. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I wanted to push this video out there because it the the this game this season kind of clicked for me. I'm fucking smurfing our games now, and I wanted to help you guys because I haven't really come out with anything uh, educational slash anything to help you guys win your games. But uh, hopefully this helps a lot. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.